Yep, that's me. You might be wondering how I ended up in this situation. It all started when Luma tried to store the whole freaking water planet. But let me start at the beginning. Nazgul, could you please? This is my video. Hello to all the meeps and bubbles and welcome back. Say hi to Echo. Echo and the two remaining Nazguls are the last duplicants remaining on this planetoid called Zapiol. And one of the goals for today is checking out this area right here. While we created a petroleum duplication device in the last episode, colonizing Sepiol with the help of a rocket and building an underground base, as well as the personal hell for our lovely Echo, went a little bit smoother than what we have planned for today. After building one of those telescope modules and uncovering the area to the right, I heavily overpressured the Zepiol rocket with oxygen, used the remaining fuel and sent Nazgul the clone to our freshly uncovered water planet. All of that in order to store the whole thing. And since we uncovered the planet, we can prepare a little bit from the home planet this time. For example, by sending over oxygen beforehand. And I guess we probably need to shoot over food as well. For now I'm going to set the interplanetary launcher to 200 kg, check how many red balls we need and check on our red bolt production system to the right, which is not running perfectly fine at the moment. We do need to refill it with phosphoride. And since we don't have phosphoride on the main, I'm going to send it over from the second planetoid. Before our lovely Nazgul the clone starves to death in his rocket, I think I'm gonna risk it and try to land him. Here in the background you can already see the supply drop as well as more tiles getting uncovered by the telescope, while at the same time on Steku's place sending over all of the swamp charts, because swamp charts don't go bad. Same as Makrood, cause our lovely Nazgul the clone will need something to eat. The rocket arrived in its destination orbit, which means that we can send down Nazgul the clone to the planet. We can send him down in the trailblazer module, but we can't send down the second MD trailblazer module, meaning we don't have enough material to build the rocket platform with. Weird bug here by the way, I probably should send that over first. Hence the copper delivery on the main planetoid to our interplanetary launcher. By the way, the bug is still there, I think I need to reload the game. By the way, I've been getting the suggestion to make Steku's place to a place of wonder and industry by using all of those different volcanoes that we have around here or geysers. And I'm inclined to do so. But uh, Steku is very slow since he's alone all the time. But before that I'm gonna change the food situation a little bit by sending over seeds from the second planetoid in order to grow some food. And we're gonna use the flower pot bug for that. So back at Steku's place we can start with a few flower pots around here. And I'm gonna use this space here for maybe the same setup that we have on Wade's planet. I almost forgot we probably need to land Nazgul, otherwise he will starve to death. So let's do that right away. Check him out, he's even radiated. Where might be a good area to send him to? <laughs> well, probably just somewhere on this platform here. Hmm, nothing is happening. Let's check the schedule. Still sleeping. Okay, let's give Nazgul a few more minutes to wake up. There it is. Sweet. And without a suit, of course. How else could it be? Ah, Nazgul. You probably will not make it. Is this oxygen? This is oxygen. Nice. So this could be interesting. So we have sandstone here. Jump jump. Dig up one sandstone. Build a ladder. Deconstruct the payload. Deconstruct the space fairer module. And construct one of those gas emptiers. I highly doubt you will survive that Nazgul the dupe. Let's hope for the best. One ladder. Empty the storage and build the oxygen thingy, which costs refined metal. No, that's the wrong one. This one. Refined metal. <laughs> Fuck you, game. <laughs> okay, let's give this a try. Roll the dramatic music. Yeah, yeah, we know. You are dying. And now, please get there. Sweet. Now we just have to make sure that we don't waste the rest of the 200 kilogram of oxygen. There you go. <laughs> we saved Nazgul the dupe in the dumbest way possible. But now we can send over more of the canister emptiers, and he still has 150 kilograms of oxygen to survive. Let's take a short breather and check out what happened on the other planetoids. Here on Wade's planet the temperature on the right is getting a little bit out of hand, so we can just expand our already existing cooling loop. Something like this should do the trick. Sweet, done. Then I connected it to the old system, topped it up with water again until it was full and now we have that beautiful extended cooling loop. 
helping us control the temperature for our crops. And after that I implemented a cooling loop on Steku's place as well, in order to control the batteries and the crops that you already saw me place, which hasn't happened at this point in time. And this is the temperature at the moment. By the way, let's check the temperature here. Ooh, nice and green. Just like our Nazgul the Radiated Dupe, which will be tasked with digging up enough space so we can land our rocket, which is pretty high. Hence, we need to dig at least down to here. Yeah, you can pee yourself all you want. Doesn't matter, you need to dig down. Over here at Steku's place I'm preparing the interplanetary payloads. At the moment, mostly oxygen that I'm siphoning off from our main system. So that we, when we accumulated 200 kilograms of our oxygen again, can send it over to Flodista, which is the name of the water planet by the way. Maybe a minipod will help us with food, we can build it to the left or to the right. But before that we need to finish the area for the rocket platform, which will be down here to the left. Meanwhile the seeds that I sent over from the main planetoid to create some plants on Steku's place are finally being delivered so that we can place them in the pots. And for Nazgul I'm using his last calories and breath to build a mini pot. And I want it out of the way because I don't want anything in this area on this planet. Let's see if he can manage to do so. Recovering breath, no it's not important, this has priority. Sweet. And activate it. This isn't helping anyone, come on, activate the thing. Very nice. Uh, how is that helping anyone? <laughs> well, okay then. That's a perfect spot for you, Nazgul. The dupe. Play the sad music. Other than that massacre, I plan to expand on the solar energy on this planetoid a little bit. And for the flower pot exploit, we can just go over to Wade's planet, copy this, change to Steku's planet. Maybe we need to use the button for that. Yes, we need from 3 to 9, copy the settings, 9, copy it over, and it looks like this. Here in the lower areas of Steku's place, I placed down a few auto sweepers. These are supposed to pick up all of the debris that is lying around. And the debris will be shipped up right next to our interplanetary launcher, the fridge and the storages. Back here at our duped graveyard, we have something good for us coming. Swamp charts, which is a non-spoiling food that we can have as preparation for the next dupe. I waited a few more cycles and we got some neutron bars as well. And of course I couldn't leave it at that and send over a buttload of oxygen, material and food. Here you can see at least 10 payloads incoming. Not all of them are 200 kilograms, but I sent over a few smaller ones with food which are quickly arriving at Flodista, even though some of them are missing the land. Which is why I sent over so much that at least a few of them hit. I need to start before all the tiles break. So let's see, we gotta print another Nazgul. We do have a strength machinery and exosuit trained bunny. You are now Nazgul the dupe, the printed one. That's too long. Nazgul the dupe, two. And <laughs> welcome to your demise. First. We need a tile here. The construction skill might help with deconstructing the payloads. No, don't run back. Oh man, dupes, why are you so dumb? If you wanna die, I can replace you all three cycles. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing you can do about this. And we need another Nazgul to do. See you in three cycles. Oh yeah, and on Zepiol, the dupes have been given a tiny digging order for the time being. And of course, the first thing they did was trap our lovely Echo, who is suffocating and starving at the moment. And he has absolutely nothing to eat, well except for the Minobot right behind him, that we could just uproot for him to eat, until help arrives. Other than that, there have been no problems with our large-scale digging order for the planet Zapiol. We even expanded further down, creating a large pool of salt water right above the magma biome and then expanded upwards into the rest of the salt biomes. And a lovely patron boot got the mechatronics engineering skill as well as a head. The third time is the charm. Let's get Nazgul the dupe number three. This time let's take the blue-haired nyctophobic dupe so we can differentiate them better. Nazgul the dupe Number 3, welcome to the base. Your skill will be building. 
And the first thing you can do is deliver oxygen to our gas bottle emptier. For that I had him deconstruct the respective payload, meaning the one that actually contains oxygen, and then transport it over to the oxygen thingy, if he makes it at all. Seems like he made it, which means that we now have our oxygen pocket and can deconstruct a lot more of our payloads, making this a tiny habitable base. That little shit dropped it, unbelievable. With the oxygen situation now under control, we can spend Nazgul's time building a small temporary base setup with a hamster wheel to produce energy, an outhouse, a pump to supply the electrolyzer setup, which will then permanently supply the base with oxygen. The hydrogen for now will just accumulate in the top part of the base, where I will place down a fridge so the food that I'm going to store in it is in a sterile atmosphere. And to the right you can see that I prepared two storage bins. The signal on top is helping focusing all the payloads on a smaller area, which we will then deconstruct and place in the storage bins to the right. Meanwhile we got a few shovel legs and a sweetle. Nazgul got the improved carrying skill as well as the improved construction. And a head. I even sent over some glass from the other planetoids to build some solar panels and use the oxygen from the electrolyzers to fill some oxygen masks. Then we got a snazzy suit. Nazgul the dupe is very happy about that. <laughs> now that we stored all of the care packages and deconstructed all of the payloads, stored them to the right in the storage bins or the fridge that are freshly placed there, we can prepare Nazgul for his journey. By the way, this is how I produce enough red bolts to power the interplanetary launcher all the time. A few Wii swords that are automatically fed with phosphoride. Yes, I could have used the plant in a bottle exploit, but I haven't had any more <laughs> free sand left anywhere. And Seiko's food production is increasing as well as you can see here. And we even got one of these new cuddle pips. And I didn't have to do anything for that. The chance of getting cuddle pip increases when you feed your regular pips thimble reed. Oh, and just for the giggles, I released a 2000 kilograms per tile oxygen that I had stored up here. And the rest of planet weight is getting tiled in. Maybe we'll get a few frames back that way. Last episode, I reduced the size of our petroleum boiler to make space for more rooms on the left, which is why I expanded our travel shaft. And now it is finally time for the first step in storing the planet which is getting Nazgul the dupe number 3 down to the ocean floor. Of course I could have just built a ladder or an oxygenated shaft system, but where's the fun in that? What I have planned is dropping Nazgul the dupe number 3 all the way down with a lot of materials and maybe one or two oxygen masks. I think I tried it with one but he died, so I should use two this time. All preparations have been done, which means we can move Nazgul to our dropping platform, deconstruct the ladder, deconstruct the fridge with the food and the tile it sits upon, as well as our storages and the tiles they sit upon, until we can finally drop Nazgul. And while Nazgul is dropping to the ocean floor, let me tell you what I have planned. I want to use an exploit to store all the water on this planetoid. And I'm not going to use my glitch pump, but a method called Azure Waterfall, named after the famous MC Azure drawings discovered by Asveron in the Clay Entertainment forums. Link in the description. Nazgul, you still haven't hit the bottom yet. Ah, okay, there it is. Now we gotta act quick, we fell with a lot of materials following us. As soon as they hit the floor we can use them to build the rocket platform, which then will save our duplicant from drowning. We finish building a rocket platform and the dupe's first oxygen mask is already empty. Well, can't argue about a long fall, so let's change the dupe into the next oxygen mask and prepare the ladder. Then or simultaneously we can land the rocket. Let's check the surrounding area quickly. Man, we are deep here. And then wait until the rocket arrives. Now that the dupe almost has access to the spacefarer module, we can help him out a little bit. It is easier to rearrange the existing modules than to build a lot of ladders, especially in our situation right now. So Nazgul, you should use your chance and just get in. There we go. Nazgul the dupe number 3 is saved. The rocket is highly overpressured with oxygen and Nazgul even is delivering the food. We do have 15.7 kg per tile and 1 kg of a roast stale grub fruit nut for now. There are a lot more payloads that contain food outside. Then we will be needing power that we create on the inside on the outside. So let's move our battery pretty far down. Here we can use the power outlet and connect it to every consumer that we might need right now. For example this liquid pump to supply our bathroom setup. We technically only have to care about the polluted water from the showers because the toilet water is just dumped into the void. After a good night's sleep Nazgul can make room for the energy production. For that I will just go with the hamster wheel and a little bit of manual leg power. The energy will be stored in this tiny battery and this larger one here to the left. 
After finishing the first battery, Nazgul decided to go for a run and fill it. Tiny battery is now powering our fridge and the big battery is being built. After finishing that, I decided to give our Nazgul a little bit of radiation protection, cause he kept getting greener by the second. Then I checked our food again and we are at 6.2 kg of roast grub fruit nut, which is around 7000 kilocalories. But those nuts are almost stale. Yes, that's what she said. And if you are wondering where all of those nuts are coming from, I have Stay Cool running extra errands. So we are basically sending them over non-stop. And we do that in tiny batches so that we have the chance of finding the payload. And for the payloads to arrive where they should, I'm adding a signal transmitter right next to the rocket. Right below that, I'm placing the payload opener, which will help us semi-automatically open all the payload, which is absolutely necessary because most of our food is contained in them. In order for us to get the materials inside the building now, we would either have to empty it out, which takes forever, or build a conveyor drop shoot, which Nazgul can't do, so deconstructing and reconstructing is the fastest option. Then in order to make space underground for our oxygen production, Nazgul did get the hard digging skill, which I then used to prepare an area for underwater works. This will be an electrolyzer spawn setup to supply the rocket with enough oxygen for the project. And after that we will be building the exploit to store the whole planet. Right here and now you can see the efforts of Nazgul to not suffocate to death. He's building the self-powered oxygen machine alone underwater while only being fed by supply drops. The oxygen is then used to pressurize the spacefarer module and supply his suit. Nazgul even got a bed now. The materials for the Asherfall exploit have already been delivered cycles ago and can now be used to build our storage. Let me show you this from further away. I'm planning to build it below the current sea level so that we can store the most amount of water. First I'm building the liquid lock entrance to our two tile high storage room for the water. Every wall that we are using here needs to be pressure resistant, so mostly mechanical airlocks or airflow tiles in some areas. Then I'm dropping a liquid that is denser than water, in this case petroleum, because I had that lying around in the rocket. Be sure to immediately close off your mechanical airlocks. By the way you can skip the liquid lock step if you don't want access to your infinite liquid storage later on, but in this case since we are building underwater it is necessary. Then we can build in a pattern like this. Yes, this is modular. We absolutely need to use doors on top because the areas that you see me place gas pipes right now will be filled with two different gases later on. And for that to happen we need to fill them with bridges. You see me placing liquid pipe bridges here. That is of course wrong. You need the gas pipe bridges. I will notice this later and correct it. Each of this bridge then needs to be filled with a different gas. Preferably the lighter on top and the heavier below. You don't even have to be careful for the water to already drop inside. You just have to be careful not to let any gases in. But even that could be dealt with pretty easily. Now that we have the skeleton for this triple Asherfall infinite liquid storage build, we only need to deconstruct the gas pipe pieces that hold the different gases. The gas bridges themselves technically don't need to go, so we can leave them there. We only need to deconstruct the gas pipes underneath the green outlet of the pipes. I stopped right before the dupe could deconstruct the first gas pipe, so you can see how this thing works. As soon as the second gas pipe is deconstructed, the water from above will flow into the lower chamber. So right now we are starting to store the whole planet. And all of that just thanks to two different gases and a clever placement of a few doors. Let's check the pressure that we have at the moment. It is around 2.4 to 5 tons of water per tile. Now that we have this modulized Azure Fault running, all that is left to do is to wait for the rest of the planet to be stored. We are at cycle 1644 at the moment. Try to remember that. Because this giant uncovered area on the map is blocking the view to the planet, I am building a ladder system right through that in hopes that we can see more of the storing process. And here we are, every time you see the light flicker now, or hear the new cycle sound, then one cycle is over. I tried to record everything, but just skipped the night times. I even opened up the water geyser to the top left. Most of the water has already been stored, so we need to zoom in a little bit. And I think once the water stops flowing, I will stop the time. Now it should be fine, I think. The rest needs to be swept up. I also plan to rebuild the pump for the electrolyzer setup. And we are at cycle 1654 at the moment. Meaning we only needed 10 cycles to store the whole planet. And the water in this tile here is around 385-391 tons. To the left even 415 tons. We even can check the water around, which still has the regular pressure that the water normally should have around one ton. 
Oh yeah, and while storing the planet, I had our Nazgul dig up stuff and build the ladder, so we uncovered this water geyser right here, which also fed a little bit of its water to the storage. And for the future, we even have more. But of course, this isn't all the testing that I did, so I switched into the dev mode, marked all the leftover water and our infinite storage to get the exact number of the water values in those tiles, which is around 10,780 tons. Or for whatever reason, if I only mark the lower area, we are even at 10,866 tons. Then I reloaded the start of this whole thing before we dropped our duplicate, made a screenshot and activated the dev mode, marked all the water tiles. Then it took me a while to find the water. And surprisingly, we are only at 7,084 tons of water, so there must have been some liquid duplication somewhere. I don't believe that a water geyser spit out that much water in just 10 cycles. I even checked it a second time with the same result, 7,084 tons. I did another check by reloading again, marking all the areas and still 7,084 tons. So now check out what our single lovely Nazgul the Dupe the Third has done to this planet all alone, with the help of a lot of care packages and uh, payloads sent over from other planetoids, but still, pretty much all alone. And this is how Zapio looks at the moment. We dug out, well, quite a lot of this planet, and our Hydra is still going strong. The liquid duplication on our refueling planet is getting out of hand a little bit. This Red Bull producing payload fueling system came in very handy on Steku's planet, which by the way looks like this at the moment. We added a lot of solar panels, cleared out even more areas and collected debris. Whereas Wade's planet is still a mess but is being tiled in one at a time. I will get rid of the liquids and gases sooner or later. But what we did here is add a nice cooling system, as you can see here. And the first planet got a few changes as well. Except for the statues everywhere, our petroleum system is still running strong, even though I made it smaller. And to the top left I added more rooms. And now I wish you all a great day and hope that you check out my channel and maybe even the memberships for more. Love you guys and Luma out!